Hello friends, Kishan is here again and welcome you in this video tutorial. In previous videos, we have learned how to specify a JPQL as well as SQL query uh, before the entity class or model class by using at the rate named queries and at the rate named native queries, right? So that approach is basically good for a small application, but if you have a uh, one of the enterprise application and you have a lot of entity classes or model classes and if you are going to scatter all your jpql or sql query uh, among all entity classes then maintenance may be a uh, very tough so we have a, another approach uh, to achieve the same functionality by using uh, a spring jpa uh, jpa uh, a, a spring data jpa by using at rate query so here in this video and next few videos we are going to talk about the at rate uh, query annotation in a spring uh, data right so saying that if you look into if you go to the i mean a, a spring official website a spring data a special website then they have given something important about at rate query so saying that using named queries to declare queries for entities is a valid approach and works fine for a small um, number of queries as the queries themselves are tied tied to the java method that executes them uh, uh, then you uh, actually you can bind them directly using the a spring data jpa at query annotation rather than annotating them to the uh, domain class or entity class this will free the domain class from persistence specific information and co-locate the query to the repository interface right and uh, something something important you have to keep in mind queries annotated to, annotated to the query method will take precedence over queries defined using at named query and uh, named queries uh, declare in uh, orm.xml so uh, as we have learned uh, by using at the rate named queries and at the rate named native query we can declare a uh, jpql as well as sql query before the class but if you are using any orm like then you, have, you can have a xml file there also you can declare a this uh, named query right and named native query but uh, if you are using at the rate and you have a named query and if in both places you have given the same name then at rate query will get the precedence right first right so let's uh, look at the here on official website they have written one uh, method in a repository interface is called find by email address and uh, they are passing email address and they have given the jpql uh, rather writing this jpql before the model class right user model class they have written uh, before the method itself and then this it's good right so at rate and they are going to select you from user u where u dot email address equal to question mark one right so we are going to follow this pattern so in earlier video tutorial we have created this example right a spring data named query demo so i'm going to make another copy of this project in the, the same workspace and uh, i would say mm, uh, a spring data uh, a spring data uh, uh, query annotation underscore one because I'm going to create a mini project uh, to uh, explore this concept so this is underscore one this is very first video on that so just wait and Eclipse is just processing and we'll get a this project very soon in our workspace now we got this project now expand this project now uh, maven dependency will load all uh, dependency all jars which is required to run this java project and after a certain while we'll see maven dependency folder over here and you can see maven dependency folder now appeared and all dependency which is required to run this application is downloaded and added in this folder now if i expand this project then what 
I will do now if you go to the entity class now here we have this model or entity class both are same thing so here we have basically specified this uh, named queries over here so we don't want to specify named query over here instead uh, what I will do uh, this query jpql we will specify before the method itself before the uh, repository method itself right uh, so here we have a repository interface here and before this method you go and you can use at the rate query annotation right and let's make a import sorry guys my machine is a bit slow so you have a import like arc.spring framework data jp repository so we'll have to make an import from here and you have a notice um, attribute is called value and here i'm going to specify this jpq right and that's it and we have another uh, query as well so this jpq also i'm going to copy and i'll put before this method using the same notation at the query and value equals to this jpq right that's it and uh, this named query i'm gonna remove from before our entity class so your entity class is now free from this persistence related queries right and that we have just moved before the uh, persistence method itself right so here the return type you that up uh, depends up to you whether you want to return a single object as a application owner you know if you have applied unique constraint on email address then of course you are going to uh, you are going to get a single record so in that case you can return a single instance if you you allowed uh, um, uh, if uh, if you haven't applied uh, I mean email if you haven't applied unique constraint on email column then you might have a multiple records uh, right uh, you, will have, you can get the multiple user objects from the persistence storage in that case you can specify the list so return type is up to you what return type you need to you want to specify if you go to the uh, end of this uh, documentation then uh, they have given the query return type what are the query value return type you can specify so you can go to, through the document in this documentation now let's run this project after modifying this and uh, make sure that the application is running perfectly fine so this is our main class bootstrap class and from there what i'm doing i'm calling a local method is called uh get person info by last name and last name we are passing murphy and we are using the uh, our service class reference over here and that service class reference we are just auto adding over here so if you look into the service class this class is on as at the rate service so spring will instantiate this class and that will keep into the container and uh, and instance name will be the people management service with first letter is small and when you asked to auto add these things then that will be auto add automatically means this instance will be populated over here and same instance you are make you are using to call its method right so this will call the this method and from here we are just auto wiring the uh, doll layer reference as well and this is a interface right and still you are trying to auto wire so spring will create a proxy for this proxy class for this and same will be injected over here and here we are making call to the r doll layer method right so this will make call to the here and here uh, we have repeated in the jpql over here right so question mark one this represents there is only one uh, uh, parameter and that is binded with this first uh, parameter right and uh, similarly this method will get call right so if you look into the order right so first you have a first name and then email so question mark first would represent the first name 
and question mark two will represent the email address. So let's test this API uh, from main method. So if I run this method, uh, run this class, uh, right? The bootstrap class, then uh, in first call what we want? We want the record based on the last name, employee last name. And if you look into the database, then we have a two employees whose last name is Murphy. So we are expecting to get the two records, right? So let's run this project. Now, run as a Spring Boot application or you can run as a Java application as well. Both will work fine. <clears throat> now you can see uh, that JPL, JP, JP, JPAQL is converted into the corresponding SQL query and you can see the last name equal to question mark and we got the two records employee a uh, person whose id is one and five both is having the last name as murphy and that's why we are getting two records so first api is working perfectly fine let's test the second api right so second api basically we are uh, trying to fetch a record based on the first name and email address right so here we are passing the first name as barry and email address as barry dot j2007 at the rate gmail.com and matching record would be only one right so uh, employee whose ID is 2 that is getting matched. So let's run this API as well. And here you can see that, that JPQL is converted into a Cosmos SQL query. And in where clause, you can see uh, condition is given on first name equal to question mark and second email equal to question marks right this two question mark is getting replaced with the value which we are just supplying from here from main method right so these two question mark is going to replace with those two actual values at runtime right uh, internally and uh, we have only one matching record right a person whose id is two right so that is getting returned because this is the record only fulfilling this criteria this uh, criteria which we have given the where clause right so I hope you enjoyed learning this video. This is not the end of, uh, this is the not the end, uh, uh, end video regarding to act rate query. Uh, we'll have a lot, many discussion about act rate query. There are a lot of many things is pending still that I'm going to cover in the next video series. So please be with me over there. And this code I'm going to put on the GitHub and GitHub location I will specify in the video description. If you have any query or feedback, then please do post below to the video itself i will try to answer those queries as soon as possible and thanks for watching this video